Hello and welcome back to Cartoon Network Invaded Reviewed. I don't have too much to say about Camp Laszlo. I watched it quite a bit, but I haven't gone back to it much outside of when I watched the Christmas episode for the list I made last year. It was funny, it had a lot of energy and the nostalgic feel to it. It perfectly encapsulated all the ups and downs of camping. And surprisingly, the main character was not annoying and the other characters were interesting and entertaining. So, yeah, it was a good show. So how does the Invaded episode hold up? Or should I say, episodes? Yes, this is the first and only one that's two 11 minute episodes instead of one 22 minute one. So let's start with the first one, Strange Trout from Outer Space. We start with Samson swimming in the lake when he notices that it has gotten darker. Thinking it's now nighttime, he gets out of the lake, even though he can tell it is still daytime. Guys, this is why the girls always beat you, stupid girls. He decides to go for one last jump but can't land in the water. Hey, don't fuck with gravity, that shit's lethal. No, it turns out he's in the tractor beam of a UFO and is being pulled in. On the ship, he awakes to find an alien that actually looks exactly like Rick in his alien form, and it turns out to be three aliens in a suit. Samson asks if they are gonna suck out his brain, which is a bit of a running gag I've noticed. Seriously, why is it always brains? Does no one want to suck out the liver? We want cheese. Okay, you could have him. No, they actually want cheese, as in the food. Samson thinks he's dreaming, but they prove they are real through shape-shifting and folk music. Because no one on this earth can fake enjoyment to folk music. Samson doesn't know where any cheese is, and so the aliens decide that the only way to get it out of him is through torture. Down on the ground, the other campers have noticed that Samson has gone missing, but not the huge ass flying saucer above them. The aliens eventually find out Samson is useless and toss him out where he lays next to Laszlo. Oh, hi Laszlo. I'm having a really bad day. Well, it's about to get better, cause we just got three new campers today. They're Canadians. No, no, not Canadians. Sweet. There you go. Ah! Samson tries to tell them that they're aliens, but no one believes him. Also, high package Frankie sent. Even the folk music doesn't do anything. Three background characters, who are literally referred to as background characters. You think it makes any difference that those big background characters believe you? Believe Samson, but he needs somebody cool to believe him. He begins to suspect that he was wrong and goes to apologize to the Canadians, but then overhears them talking. If we can just get into McMuesley's stash, then we'll be set. Oh, all the cheese we can eat, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Canada! That night, okay, that's pretty freaking funny. The Canadians sneak into the mess hall to get some cheese, but Samson and the vague background characters come to catch them. It doesn't go well. You fucked it up! You fucked it up! Behold. Score. You know, in all my years as a professional cheese thief, never have I been treated so badly. Wait, so they're not the aliens? Then who is? Better here, Samson! Oh! Okay, I totally saw that coming. The aliens, realizing that they no longer have any cheese to steal, instead head over to Acorn Flats. And we begin the second episode, Cheese Orbs. The camp is holding their annual cheese ball, because of course they are, and Patsy is upset because she's allergic to cheese. It's finally complete! <gasps> Come out here! Behold, the Allergitron Chamber version 3.0! You can take it to the cheese ball! Why does it look like a shoe? Patsy gets in the machine and accidentally jets off, punching a hole in the mess hall and ruining her hair. <laughs> Look at her hair! My hair! <laughs> uh, yeah, I, it looks kind of cool, Patsy. <laughs> you and your stupid science experiment! Oh, come on, she did manage to create what is essentially a rocket ship on wheels. That must mean something. Nina heads to her workshop and that night hears a knock, knock, knocking. What do you think? Nina tries to connect with the aliens, but they're only interested in the cheese. Nina tells them about the cheese ball the next night, and they wonder if they should stay for the next 24 hours. 
Ta -da! Sh Check out my neat new space jumper. It's weird it's harmless will stay. <laughs> It's true, this show really does feel a lot like pre-movie Spongebob. I forgot how funny it was. Patsy and Gretchen come to apologize, but don't take too kindly to the aliens. Nina kicks them out, and the next day they try to distract her with something else. What is it now? Nina, this is Bigfoot. Got any nice beef jerky? You, if we do not get cheese soon, we will disintegrate you. <laughs> I'll give you three sheep and a punch in the stomach. Do we have a deal? Pip pip la doodly doo. No thanks. After those fail, the two give up. Laszlo and the other jelly scouts come over and try to cheer them up with cheese, but it makes Patsy cry and run away. This gives Gretchen an idea. Nearly kill her friend in order to get her other friend back. I tried that once. I don't have friends anymore. <gasps> Eventually, their plan fails and they are exposed. We get this cute little moment between Patsy and Nina, but when the aliens find out that all the cheese has been eaten, they leave the Earthlings with a message. Our patience has expired with this insolent blue planet. We have tried to be agreeable, but now they have left us no choice. Creatures of Earth, prepare yourself to suffer the wrath of our displeasure! And we will see the conclusion to that next week. So yeah, these two episodes were pretty fun. I prefer cheese orbs, as I'm not too big a fan of the crazy person who is right cliche, but both have some funny moments, creative ideas, and nice animation. Although I'm beginning to wonder, if this show and My Gym Partners a Monkey take place in the same universe as Foster's, could that mean that all the animal characters are actually imaginary friends? Someone make a conspiracy on that. So next week we conclude by heading back to Ensville for Billy and Mandy Moon the Moon. See you then! There, finally made that joke.